This is another video in the series from Math 1224 for UTSA. Today, we're going to be talking about 5.4, the comparison test. So first, as you can see, is the direct comparison test. Um, this is a lot like um, where we dealt with integrals converging or not converging. We'd compare one, one function to another and say, oh, well, if this function is less than this other function that's convergent, the integral is convergent. Well, then this integral we care about has to converge. Or if uh, this other integral is divergent, then this one has to be divergent because we know it's bigger. You basically set up an inequality. So looking at this series, this is not a P series, right? This is not the form 1 over n to the P power. The, that plus 1 is preventing it from being that. But what we can do is say, well, can we compare this with a P series? So can I say, for example, that 1 over n squared plus one is greater than or less than or sorry, rather greater than or equal to or less than or equal to some other uh, sequence that I, I know about. So I, I would like to compare this to say, I'll give you two examples. One, if, if we were going to show that this was divergent, we'd want to say, oh, this is greater than something that we know to be divergent. So the harmonic series we know is divergent. It turns out this doesn't work. If you um, flip both sides, you get n squared plus one is less than or equal to n. Um, but if you square a number, you know, a whole number, and then add one, you don't get a lesser value. So this just does not work. This is not true. Um, but we do know that, that this series is divergent. So we could try to show divergence of this series using the harmonic series. But it turns out not to work in this case. So instead, we'll compare this to a p-series. I mean, that harmonic series, I guess, is a p-series. But a different p-series. So I'm going to compare this to, um, so 1 over n squared plus 1. Now I could compare this to a p-series with a small p-value, which would be divergent, but I'm going to say that this is less than or equal to 1 over n squared, which as a series I know is convergent. So if I can show that this is always true, or at least it's true after a certain point, it's true for some tail of the series, then I will I will be able to infer convergence. So if I flip both sides of this inequality, I get n squared uh, plus 1 is greater than or equal to n squared, which is just, yeah, that's subjectively true. If I subtract n squared on both sides, right, I'll get 1 is greater than or equal to 0. So yeah, that's obviously true. This is more obvious now, right? No matter what number you pick, the left-hand side, oops, no matter what number you pick for n, the left-hand side is always bigger because you've added 1, right? So because... In fact, let me do it this way. So uh, by the direct comparison test, and I believe the many textbooks just call this the comparison test. I like to call it the direct comparison test. By the direct comparison test, which we'll uh, spell out in a moment, um, since, since uh, 1 over n squared plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over n squared, and... Uh, the series, and it goes from 1 to infinity, of 1 over n squared uh, converges. And I'll put in parentheses p series. You know, how do I know it's convergent? I can't just say, oh, I'm going to compare to this other series that is convergent without it actually being convergent. So I have to say why. So uh, p series, p equals 2, right? Uh, this series converges. 1 over n squared plus 1. Cool. So I set up an inequality, and I compare to something that I know is convergent, right? So this one, this is a p-series. And therefore, since this inequality holds, the, the series I'm talking about is less than term by term. The other one, this one has to also converge. Basically, another way of saying this is that since this sequence is always less than the sequence term by term, this series must be less than this series. And since this one converges, this one automatically converges. It's basically what that says. So let's put that in formal language, I guess. So direct comparison test. There's two ways to do this, two directions. Uh, given two sequences and some big N in the uh, uh, natural numbers, such that 0 is less than or equal to A sub N is less than or equal to B sub N. So they, these have to be non-negative as well for all little n greater than or equal to big N, if the series um, of B sub N converges, then the series of A sub N converges automatically. Because you've shown that this one is the smaller series, 
when you set up this inequality, when you demonstrate this inequality. Okay, so on the other hand, uh, given two sequences, basically the same setup, and big N in uh, the natural number such that, in this case, B sub N is less than or equal to A sub N. So B sub N is the smaller series this time, okay? Uh, for all little n greater than or equal to big, big N. If the series for B sub N diverges, right? If the smaller one diverges, then the larger one automatically diverges as well, right? If, if you have a series that you know to diverge, and you take the one you're talking about, and you show it's bigger than the one that's known to diverge, well, then it has to diverge as well, basically. And that's what I was attempting to do here. I was saying, oh, let me try to show divergence by comparing to the harmonic series, which I know diverges. But it, this series does converge, so you'll get stuck in the algebra. It won't work. This inequality you're trying to set up is simply false. So you're not going to, as long as you're checking your inequalities, which is why it's essential to do that, you're not going to accidentally get the wrong result. So as long as you are, you are sitting at the inequality appropriately, confirming it really is true, um, at least for large values of little n, right? That's actually true for all n, just all, val all, all n greater than some, some number that you have to determine. In this case, it's always true, n could be 1. Um, and then you compare to a series that you know the convergence of. Okay, let's do some more examples. So how about this one? 1 over n minus 1 half. And you might say, well, it's pretty close to the harmonic series, right? That one half is the only difference between this and the harmonic series. So let's compare it to the harmonic series. Now, I know the harmonic series diverges, so I'm kind of expecting to get divergence here, okay? So what I want to show is that this is greater than or equal to 1 over n. If, if I were to do something differently, and I were to show that, um, that this is less than or equal to this divergent series, that doesn't tell me anything. Taking a series and showing that it's less than you know, term by term less than a divergent series means, well, it could be convergent, could be divergent. I, I don't know. It doesn't, that doesn't tell me anything. Um, in order to show divergence, I have to show, I have to show that this one's greater than the other one or uh, greater than or equal to, of course. So if I just flip both inequality, or sorry, flip both fractions form the reciprocal of n minus one half is less than or equal to n, which, yeah, if you take a number and subtract one half, that's less. In other words, if I subtract n on both sides, I get negative one half is less than or equal to zero, which is totally true. So by the direct comparison test, and I guess, you know, we could do direct comparison test. We can abbreviate it. That's fine. Since um, one over n minus one half is uh, greater than or equal to one over n and um, the series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverges. And it wouldn't hurt to put in, uh, in parentheses, harmonic. That's that's how I know, because this is the harmonic series. Uh, on a test, um, let me pause here for a moment. On a test, you don't need to say this again. I, I'm referring back to what I already wrote. So if you if you were to leave um, this part out, uh, actually, the end. Sorry, if you were to leave this part out, since you already said that, um, just say you're using the direct comparison test and say which you're comparing to. You, you don't have to repeat the thing you just got done saying. I'm just using a complete, a complete sentence, basically. Uh, so by the direct comparison test, and since this inequality holds, um, in fact, um, holds uh, for all n greater than equal to 1, I probably should say that. That's, that's part of the conditions up here. Up here, this this really is um, for all n greater than equal to one, but we had not said that at that point. We hadn't gotten the statement of the theorem. But that's 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 fine. We hadn't said it that way yet. Okay. So uh, this is harmonic. This series. Uh, diverges. Or in other words, you, you might see this language um, is divergent. It's another another way to say the same thing. Okay, let's do another example. Now, for some of these, it's not always immediately obvious. Is this convergent or not? But I do notice this kind of looks like a, um, this kind of looks like a, a P-series with, with, P equals three, so that's one option. Um, there's several things I could do. 
it, there's no single correct result. Um, so let's try comparing it to the P series with the P equals three. And we might try a second method just to see, just to demonstrate, yeah, there really are two ways to do this. So I'll start, since, since again, this is really close to just being a P series, these other terms are the only difference. Um, and I know the P series is convergent when P equals three. So I'm gonna try to show that this is less than um, or equal to one over n cubed. Okay, so I will uh, form the reciprocal of both sides, so n cubed plus three n minus one greater than or equal to n cubed, All right? And uh, yeah, if I subtract, if I subtract n cubed on both sides, I'll have three n minus one is less, uh, rather greater than or equal to zero. If I add one to both sides, so three n is greater than or equal to one, and then divide by three, and it's greater than or equal to one third. So yeah, that's totally true because n starts at one, right? Um, if your series were different and you were starting with n equals zero, then what this would mean is no, no, no. We have to start at one for the comparison. The fact that the series in fact starts at zero is fine. It's not a problem. And this this series could do that. It's not a problem. It's just that for the comparison, you have to find that there is a definite starting point, either that this is for all whole numbers starting at one or zero, wherever you decide to start. Um, I say whole numbers, I mean counting numbers. Um, or uh, maybe it starts at five or six or something like that. So at some point we'll have one where it starts at a certain point. Anyway, so then I can conclude based on this, oh, since this is a, this is a P series, I know that I have convergence. So let's go ahead and say this. Um, by the direct comparison test, and I won't repeat this. I don't need to say this again. Um, since this series converges, which we, you know, we know this because this is a P series. P equals three, right? Which is greater than one, therefore it's convergent. Uh, this series converges. And again, as I said, uh, you don't need to re-quote what you just got done saying. That's fine. Like on a test, you don't need to say it twice. Anyway, let's look at another option. Is there some other way? I, I think this is probably the most efficient, but is there some other comparison that could be made? So let's say um, n cubed plus 3n. Uh, was it squared? No, nice one. I want to compare this to something that we've done previously. Um, I want to compare this to, and it probably actually be starting with a question mark because this is in doubt when we get started. One over n squared plus n. That's something that we previously showed was convergent. It's a telescoping series, right? This is um, one over n minus one over n plus one when you do the partial fraction decomposition. We did that in a previous video. So is this always true? Well, if I form the reciprocal of both sides, so n cubed uh, plus three n minus one is greater than or equal to n squared plus n, you might say, well, this is cubic. This is only quadratic. So, you know, if n was 10, then certainly the left-hand side is more because this would be 1,000 plus uh, 30 minus 1. So it'd be 1,029, or is this merely 110? So you could say, oh, if n equals 10, or uh, rather if big n equals 10, then you go, yep, definitely. Um, just use, oops. Use a uh, big N equals 10, and then you're done. That's, that's always true because the left-hand side is cubic, right? Um, if you wanted to try the smallest number where this is true, you could say, well, I know that um, if I subtract um, on both sides, N squared plus N, you could go, okay, well, I have N cubed minus N squared plus 2n minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. And in, 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 in a certain sense, this is still in question. Let's suppose we're not doing this reasoning, right? And in fact, let's do this. Uh, yeah, let's kind of make that sort of like, oh, that's a, that's a more of a side note. It's not the reasoning we're going to use here, although you could. How do I know that this is true or always true? Well, obviously, if n equals 1, right? If n equals 1, then you're going to have 1 cubed minus 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 1, which equals 1. And that's definitely greater than or equal to 0, right? So is that always true, right? Well, 
you could say, is this an increasing function, right? You could say, well, um, if you think about uh, f of x equals, we can do a comparison to a, to a function of a real variable. Right, you say, oh, is this, is this always increasing when x is greater than or equal to 1? Is this increasing on the interval uh, 1 to infinity? Well, in fact, I should do this. I should not include the endpoint because a uh, function cannot be increasing at an individual point. So, well, f prime of x, this is 3x squared minus 2x plus 2, right? So uh, where is this 0? This is 0. And where are the critical numbers? This is always defined. The domain is all real numbers. So we're not going to find a critical, critical number by looking for where this is undefined. So 3x squared uh, minus 2x plus 2. Does this factor in an easy way? Um, I don't think that it does. Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, so we could complete the square or use quadratic formula. I'm going to go with the quadratic formula. That's probably going to be the fastest way to do it. Sometimes we have to, um, you know, in Cal 2, we're doing these more complicated things. We're doing these more complicated higher level calculus things. We still have to go back and do some Cal 1 or some algebra. Like, well, that's why Cal 1 comes before Cal 2. Right? That's why it's in that order so that you learn those tools to use them later. Um, so negative B will be positive 2 plus or minus a square root of B squared to 4 minus 4ac, well, that's going to be 24. Ah, there are no critical numbers, right? No critical numbers. So this function is always increasing or always decreasing on its entire domain. And just by looking at the function, you can probably tell the end behavior. You can probably tell that it's increasing. But let's just pick a test point. Let's say, okay, what's f prime of 2, right? Is this an increasing function? So 3. 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 2. So this will be, what is it, uh, 12 minus 4 plus 2. Yeah, that's positive. So uh, yes, increasing. Okay, so, so uh, when n is 1, the cubic is greater, right? And... Since this function is increasing its entire domain, the cubic is always greater, okay? So now we can conclude, uh, you know, this is true, right? And we can say, okay, um, by direct comparison test, uh, since series n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n times n plus 1, converges. This is because it's telescoping. Uh, this series converges. So hopefully you can see how there's at least sometimes more than one way to do things. And which one is easier? Well, I think it's pretty obvious in this case that um, the comparison uh, with the, the P-series is easier. But maybe you don't always notice the easiest way. And there's some other way, which is more writing, is more complicated. But that's fine. You're not always going to see the most efficient way every time. So whatever way works is fine. Okay, what do we have next? Okay. Uh, okay, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over ln natural logarithm event. So I don't already know the best way necessarily to do all of these. Uh, for the previous one, that was kind of obvious. For this one, I think, uh, you know, there's something we have not been doing that I forgot to mention that we should have been doing. For any series, you really should always start. Step one should be use the nth term test for divergence. Always at least consider it. Why is that? Well, obviously, if the series is convergent, then this test will not tell you anything, right? This test can't show convergence, only divergence. But sometimes, you know, you're going to have a, a series that's divergent, and you could use 
the direct comparison test, but that's more work. You don't need to do that. So you really should always start with the nth term test because that, that's going to save you some time sometimes. That's that's in part why we did that test first. It's the very first um, series convergence test that we did. Uh, I You know, I think right after we talked about, it was right around the time we talked about um, geometric series. I can't remember if it was immediately after or immediately before, but this is our first test. So um, what's the limit? Is n goes to infinity of 1 over ln of n. Well, if you think about the uh, n behavior of the function ln of n, as n goes to infinity, ln of n also goes to infinity. The function's increasing on its entire domain. And the, the range is all real numbers, so this is an, uh, sorry, I almost wrote is infinity. 1 over a, a function whose n behavior is infinity will be 0. So this does not give us anything, this test, but we should try it because sometimes it'll save us some effort. So um, thinking about this um, this function here and, and having having a visual sense of what some of these parent functions do, kind of like up here, I had the immediate sense that like, oh, well, this is cubic, so it's always going to be bigger because it's cubic, right? Um, not always, but like on a certain interval. This guy, well, I know that ln is generally less than n, right? L ln of x, I, I misspoke, ln of n is less than n. So ln of x as a function is generally less than x, okay, on its entire domain. When x is small, when x is less than 1, ln of x is negative, right? Um, so I think if I wanted to try and say, well, since this is true, and we could confirm it, I, I suspect that this is true, and we could even throw that, that or equal in there. Uh, then I can flip both sides and say, well, this is 1 over ln of x. This is greater than 1 over x, right? Oh, so that means that the harm, this is greater than the harmonic series through direct comparison. And if I want, all I have to do is go through and change all these x's to n's, right? So, in fact, I'll just do that here. 1 over ln of n. If, if this is true for ln of x on its entire domain, well, then it's certainly true for um, natural numbers. Okay, so we need to confirm that this is true. Like, how do I know? I, I think it's true. I have this intuition that it's true, but how do I know? Basically, we're going to do the same thing we did up uh, here, where we had to look at the derivative and confirm that something is increasing or, or, or not. So let's put this over here. And let's say we're going to confirm this right here. So I'm going to subtract ln of x on both sides. I want to confirm that x minus ln of x is um, always positive. Because if that's true, then this inequality holds up and I can do the comparison. And I have a relatively easy solution to this um, uh, series. Oh, it diverges. We don't have to go any further. Well, if x equals, say, 1, well, then I'm going to have 0 less than or equal to 1 minus ln of 1 ln of 1 is 0, so yeah, that, that checks out. 0 is less than or equal to 1. So is this function always increasing? Because if it is, then I'm in business. So let's say we have f of x equals x minus ln of x. And I want to look for the derivative. And is this increasing on its entire domain? So the derivative is 1 minus 1 over x. Right? Um, so is this always positive? Well, not always. Like if x was 0 0.1, right? 1 over 0 0.1 would be 10. 1 minus 10 is, of course, negative. So no, this is not always positive. But this is always positive, or 0. It's non-negative um, when n, oh, x rather, sorry, x x is greater than or equal to 1, right? So this is um, always, well, this function is non-decreasing on that interval, but also we could start at 1 and say, or sorry, 2 rather, right? So f prime of x uh, equals 1 minus 1 over x. This is positive, right? Not, not even, not just not negative, but not um, negative or 0. It's always positive when uh, x is greater than or equal to, say, 2, for example, right? So we could say that this holds up. This is true tr 
true when, um, I guess, yeah, not one. We couldn't use one, could we? Because then you'd be dividing by zero. So you have to start at n equals, n equals two. And in fact, up here, yeah, that's got to start at two anyway, doesn't it? It's a little, little mistake there. So you might have noticed that. You might have been shouting at your screen, like, why is he doing this? He's ignoring the fact that that can't be one. It has to be two. Anyway, that's fine. So really, uh, this part's all fine. It's, it's a little redundant because we ended up realizing the two anyway, but the two is what's important. So uh, when n equals two, that's true. So by uh, the direct comparison test, since harmonic goes from one to infinity of one over n uh, diverges, it's because it's harmonic. Uh, this series. And you might notice something that I'm about to point out. Maybe you noticed, maybe not. Okay. The nth term test for divergence failed to show divergence, right? But the direct comparison test did show uh, divergence. So you should always start with the nth term test for divergence because sometimes it will it'll save you some effort. Not always, but sometimes. Okay, what's next? Okay, there you go. So um, this one, uh, maybe, you should, maybe you should pause the video and think, what should we do first? What should we try first? And what we should try first is, we just got done saying a moment ago, is uh, the nth term for divergence. So what is the limit? as n goes to infinity of one over, oops, infinity of one over two to the n plus one. Well, if you know how two to the n behaves, you know that two to the n will go to infinity. So the bottom goes to infinity. So this will be zero, right? You have one over a huge number that's basically zero, right? So no conclusion. And again, that does not mean I mean, I'm saying it, so I'm being a little redundant here, but this result does not mean that this series is convergent. It might be, it might not be. Okay, so um, I think what we're going to want to do is compare with a geometric series. So if we look at uh, 1 over 2 to the n plus 1, I want to show this is um, similar to a, to a geometric series, and geometric series converge when r is less than 1, which I, is I, I think is what we have. I want to show that this is less than or equal to uh, 1 over 2 to the n. And it might not be obvious. Like, well, that's not a p-series. Like, how do we know that that's definitely um, convergent? Which I'll, I'll, It's geometric, and I'll point out why in a moment, in case it's not obvious. So if I form the reciprocal on both sides, 2 to the n plus 1, that's greater than or equal to 2 to the n, which, well, yeah, if you add 1 to something, of course it's bigger. Or in other words, subtract 2 to the n on both sides. 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Yeah, that's always true for any n, right? So now I need to convince you that this is geometric. Well, I could write this as 1 to the n over 2 to the n. And through the uh, properties of exponents, this is 1 half to the n power. So this is geometric. Geometric with uh, r less than 1. So it's convergent. Right? And I don't need to... You know, calculate, okay, well, what's the value of it? I just care about, is it convergent or not? And it's geometric, r is less than 1, so I know it's convergent. So by the direct comparison test, looks a little bit like a, a weird j. Let's fix that. Since the series n goes to from 1 to infinity of uh, 1 over 2 to the n is convergent, or converges, phrase it that way, Converges in parentheses, I'll say it's geometric. Geometric r equals 2. Or not 2, rather, but 1 half. Right? Uh, this series converges. All right. Okay, what's next? Okay, limit comparison test. So, um, we'll get to the statement of the test in a moment, but we'll just start um, with an example first. So one thing I could try 
you know, to start with first, hey, you know what? what what's the starting point? Nth term test. So first step, nth term test. So the limit, oops, limit is n goes to infinity of one over n squared minus one. Well, n goes to infinity, subtracting one doesn't really matter. So you get zero, right? Okay, so next you could try a direct comparison. You say, well, this looks a lot like a, um, uh, this looks a lot like a um, P series, right? And P series will be convergence. So I'm thinking, oh, okay, cool. I can show convergence here. So I want to show that one over n squared uh, minus one, this is less than or equal to one over n squared. And once I show that, I will have convergence by direct comparison, right? Um, if I um, form the reciprocal of both sides, I'll have n squared minus one is greater than or equal to n squared. And you might notice there's a problem with that. Uh, that this is always false, regardless of what you choose for n, right? So in, in particular, if you subtract n squared from both sides, you'll get negative one is less than or equal to zero, which is just never true. This does not work. So you could try a different direct comparison. That might work. Um, but this is so similar to a, a uh, p-series, and a p-series clearly converges. I don't have to do much work, um, even if I wanted to do an integral test to, con to confirm it. That's not that difficult, right? Um, so I want to do a different test. The limit comparison test is what we're going to do. So there's there's actually two ways to start this. Uh, for this one, it doesn't matter which way we start. So I'm just going to pick one and go with it. So I'm going to call um, this series that we actually have, the sequence I'll call A sub n. So 1 over n squared minus 1. Okay. And then uh, I'll call, and you don't really have to name them, but it's going to line up nicely with the uh, property we have in a few minutes or in a couple of minutes, one over n squared. I'm still trying to use the P series. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the limit as their ratio, uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of their ratio. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n. Why am I doing that? Well, let me write this out again. Okay. So big fraction. So 1 over n squared minus 1. And I said that there's two ways to start this. Um, it doesn't matter which one is on top versus on bottom in this case, but we'll talk more about that later. I could have had a b sub n over a sub n if I wanted to. And it turns out for this example, it would work fine. Anyway, what am I doing here? And I think the book goes through the proof of this if you want to read it, but I'm not going to do that here. Um... Basically, what we're doing is we're looking at the ratio of the terms. Term by term, what is the ratio? Because if you think about it, if um, supposing, let's change colors here for a moment. I'm going to erase this in a second. Supposing that this um, is convergent, right? It, it is, right? It converges to one, as I recall. What if I just doubled it? So this would also be convergent. I'm just doubling the terms. They still shrink fast enough to converge because that would just be like doubling the, the whole value, right? And if I triple it, well, that's just like tripling the whole value. So if one series is proportional to one I know about, and I know that the second one's convergent, the first one has to be convergent as well. If the second one's divergent, the first one has to be divergent as well. If I took something that I know diverges, it, the, the terms are too big, to add up to a, a you know a number, they they go to infinity. Well, if I double everything, well then it's the total still infinity because you I just if I'm doubling the size of terms that add up to infinity anyway, well then they still do right. Or if I cut them in half, well infinity is a big amount right. So half of a series that totals to infinity would still be infinity. They still pile up too quickly. The terms don't shrink fast enough right. So what I'm doing here in this ratio is I'm looking at, okay, do these two series shrink to zero at the same speed? Remember, the harmonic series doesn't converge because its terms shrink too slowly. This limit test is comparing, do these two series, the terms, shrink to zero at roughly the same speed? Do they get to zero at the same time? And if they do, then they're either both convergent or both divergent because they're roughly the same size. Not exactly. They're not equal, but they're roughly in the same ballpark. Um, 
And so if one is, say the, the limit of, or this, the value, the convergent value of one of them is 10, the other one might be nine or 11 and a half or something in the ballpark, right? This won't be a way to calculate the, the value, just a way to test for convergence. So I can work out what is this limit, and that will tell me, since I know that this series converges, if this limit is say two or three or something like that, then it will tell me that this one also converges. So I'm gonna start by, um, you know, if you divide two fractions, you can change it into multiplication by the denominator, right? So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n squared minus one times n squared over one, which might be kind of obvious what's gonna happen here. Um, this is the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over n squared minus one. Okay. And there's a couple of ways to work out this limit. I, I think the, the most straightforward way is to recognize that that minus one on bottom doesn't really affect the value very much and say, well, I'm just gonna throw that minus one out because it's, it's insignificant. As n goes to infinity, that minus one doesn't really matter that much. And then this reduces to one. So what this means is the terms of the two series are roughly equal, right? In, in the limit, they're, they're, they're equal. What this means is a sub n is approximately equal to b sub n. So since this series converges, it adds up to a finite amount, that means that this one has to as well because they're roughly equal. And you can't have something that converges to a number like 10 and something that diverges to infinity being roughly equal. 10 and infinity are not roughly equal, right? So we can say uh, by the limit comparison test, since the series n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared converges, and I'll make a note, it's P series, P equals two, right? Um, the series, it goes from one to infinity of one over n squared minus one converges. And so you might notice based on that, that in this, this example, direct comparison didn't work. That's why we start with this one because we have to introduce at some point one that, you know, only limit comparison test works. Um, but there are definitely series, oh, almost out of space here. There are definitely series where either could work. So if you wanted to look at this one, and I, I'm not gonna work this one out, just sort of as a side note. In fact, this might be a homework problem. Uh, this one, uh, you could do direct comparison or limit comparison for this one and compare it to the P series with P equals two. Okay, so let's get to the statement of the test. So limit comparison test. Given two sequences such that A sub n and B sub n uh, are greater than or equal to zero for all little n greater than or equal to one. So for the entire sequences, no, no negative values in either sequence. Then if the limit of the ratio of the two sequences is some number L that is not zero, zero is handled, handled separately, then either the two series both converge or they both diverge. Basically what that means is, basically the reason for that is the limit being some number L means that the terms in the sequence are roughly proportional to each other, at least in the tail of the sequence. As you follow the sequences out towards infinity, um, the two, the val the pairwise values in each sequence. So term 1000 in sequence A, term 1000 in sequence B, term 1001, term 1002, and so forth. They're roughly proportional. One is maybe twice as much as the other, for example. So this means that B sub n is roughly L times A sub n, okay? This doesn't let you determine the value of one series from the other, but it would be in the same ballpark, you know, kind of close, but not, not equal. And not, not a direct proportion. The, ter the terms are roughly proportional, so the series are kind of roughly proportional. And if you have uh, two series that are one's roughly proportional to the other, you can't have one totals to 10 and the other totals to infinity. Like That doesn't work because that those are those two values, infinity is not a number, but those two quantities are not proportional, right? They're not similar in any way. So 
Okay, so if you do the same limit and you get zero, then if the bottom series converges, then the top has to as well. Why is that? Well, basically the limit is saying that the top sequence gets to zero faster, right? The total, the limit is zero, so the top gets to zero faster. So that means that B goes to zero slower. Remember that a, a series that goes to uh, zero, or sorry, a sequence that goes to zero slowly might have a series that does not converge, harmonic series, for example. But if B sub n does converge and it's the slow one, well, then the fast one has to converge as well. If you do the same limit and the limit is infinity, okay, then that means that B sub n is the fast one. This is the one that goes to zero faster, okay? So if B sub n still fails to converge, it still diverges, kind of like the harmonic series would, then A sub n, being the slower one, also has to diverge. Okay, so let's do some more examples of, of applying that. So how about this one? The series, as n goes from 1 to infinity, of 1 over the square root of n plus 1. Um, so we're going to be doing a um, limit comparison, and there's lots of options. You know, what do we want to compare this to? I think it would be useful to, to notice that this, um, this is the same as the series as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the 1 half power plus 1. So this is kind of reminiscent of a p-series with p equals 1 half, which would be divergent, right? So maybe I want to say, if I'm trying to show divergence, I want to show that this is slower than the, uh, say, 1 over n to the 1 half power, right? So um, it doesn't really matter necessarily which you, um, well, the way this is set up, the bottom one is always the one that we know about, right? We have to know about that one. It tells us about the top one. So we're going to put the P series with P equals one half on bottom, okay? So we're going to call this A sub n. And then B sub n equals one over n to the one half power, because that one we know diverges, okay? So what's the limit? As n goes to infinity of big fraction, one over... n to the 1 half power plus 1 over 1 over n to the 1 half power. And as before, since we are um, dividing fractions, you, you can basically uh, rewrite that as multiplying by the denominator, the reciprocal rather than the denominator. So limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 1, uh, rather n to the 1 half power plus 1 times uh, n to the 1 half power over 1. I could have saved some time combining this fraction all one step, but that's fine. So let me as n goes to infinity of n to the 1 half power over n to the 1 half power plus 1. And as before, that 1 doesn't really affect the value. So I'll say that this equals the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the 1 half power over n to the 1 half power, but that's 1, as similar to the previous example. So I get 1. So these series either both converge or both diverge, and I know that the p-series of p equals 1 half diverges. So by the limit comparison test, since the series n goes from 1 to infinity, of 1 over n to the 1 half power. Try to write neatly. Diverges. This is p series with p equals 1 half. The series is n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over. I didn't do the divergence test. That's okay, though. We'll, we'll, we'll go back and do it retroactively, because I really should have started with that. Since I, I've grouped these together, and I've chosen five, five examples where I'm going to use the limit comparison test, I know that's what I'm going to be doing, but we really ought to be starting with the um, nth term for divergence test. Or, yeah, nth term 
test for divergence. The limit n goes to infinity of 1 over the square root of n plus 1. But if you know what the graph of the square root function looks like, you know that that's, that's 0. So the bottom goes to infinity. OK. So inconclusive, right? But, but with the um, limit comparison test, we do get divergence. OK. So let's go ahead and do, do the next example. And, and I will start with the uh, nth term test. which again, uh, some books um, will call the divergence test. So the limit n goes to infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n. Well, I say that um, that plus 1 doesn't matter because 2 to the n goes to infinity and 3 to the n goes to infinity. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n over 3 to the n. We could also, if I didn't want to resort to that method, I could use Lahopital's rule, um, but I'm not going to bother doing that. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 thirds to the n power, so this goes to 0. Right? When the exponent goes to infinity, since uh, the base is less than 1, the whole thing goes to 0. So inconclusive. So again, that does not mean that this series converges. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But I suspect this is kind of close to a geometric series. So maybe I want to do a limit comparison with a geometric series. Um, if I tried to do a direct comparison with a geometric series, I don't think this would work. Right? Let's, in fact, let's step two. Let's try direct comparison. Maybe it's easier. So let's try that. Well, I would want to show that... 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n is less than or equal to 2 to the n over 3 to the n, right? That, that would allow me to do a direct comparison. But if you add 1 in the numerator, this is bigger. So this is just wrong. It's not going to work. So direct comparison test. Maybe there's a different comparison to make, but not with this geometric series here. That's not going to work because, of course... Um, as, as we already showed up here, this is 2 thirds to the n power. Or in other words, this is 2 thirds times 2 thirds to the n minus 1 power. So it's geometric. So if I can compare it with that, then I'm, I'm in business. So let's do the limit comparison test. Now I know that this is the one I know about, so that's b sub n. So in fact, let's um let's let's refer to it as this one. These are going to be less useful, I think these versions. So b sub n is that one, a sub n is that one. So what's the limit? In fact, let me conserve room. Uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n over b sub n. So that's going to equal the limit as n goes to infinity of a big fraction 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n over 2 to the n over 3 to the n. Now, I'm not going to um, do that thing where I say, oh, let's let's multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. We, we don't need to do that. We can. But I'm just going to multiply top and bottom by um, 3 to the n. Essentially, we're multiplying top and bottom. We're, we're multiplying, multiplying the, the function by 1 or the, the sequence by 1. So these all go away, and I get the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n. And yeah, that, that plus 1 doesn't affect the result. When, when n goes to infinity, those other terms get so large that the 1 doesn't matter. So I get the limit of 2 to the n over 2 to the n. This is a bit dull. I understand that oh, the limits are always 1, but that's not always going to happen. The limit might be 2 or 5 or whatever at some point. Um, so this is 1, which is 1. So yeah, by the uh, limit comparison test, since the series n goes from 1 to infinity of 2 
there's the m power converges this is a geometric uh, r is less than well r is equal to two thirds which of course isn't less than one um the uh this series converges okay all right what's next maybe one where the limit isn't one okay so looking at this one i f i'm i'm suspecting i'm suspecting convergence um why is that well this is definitely um well hold on let's do the uh nth term test first so the limit and goes to infinity of the natural logarithm of n over n squared well this is going to equal the limit as x goes to infinity of ln of x over x, right? The, the limit of the sequence will be the same as the limit of the function. Um, that's going to equal, um, if you look, think about it, the, the top goes to infinity, right? When x goes to infinity, the top goes to infinity, and so is the bottom. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. So this would be the limit as not n, sorry, x goes to infinity of uh, x to the negative 1 power over uh, 1. So this equals the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, which is 0. So um, inconclusive, no result. Um, we could try direct comparison, and that's what I'm thinking about. Um, that's not ultimately what we're going to do, but I do want to think it. I do want to consider it. So ln of n over n squared is greater than or equal to 1 over n squared, right? So direct comparison with this p-series will not help. But, but, um, this is also less than, no, less than, less than, yeah, less than 1 over n. <clears throat> But that won't help us either, because 1 over n is divergent. And comparing with a divergent series is not going to give me uh, convergence. It's not going to show convergence. It could only show divergence. And I can only do that, I can only show divergence if this inequality was in the other direction. So basically, both of these inequalities are in the wrong direction. Uh, we cannot use uh, this to show convergence. And we cannot use this to show divergence. So I'm not going to be able to compare this to a harmonic series or or this P series, maybe a different P series. Maybe if I compare it to one over n cubed, I might get something, but I doubt it. Um, since of course, one over n cubed is even smaller than that. And, and one over n to the fourth is smaller than that, right? So maybe there is a direct comparison that would work, but I don't, I don't see one. So I want to do a limit comparison. So I want to do a limit comparison with uh, the, um, this, this P series. Maybe that will work. And since this is the one I know about, this one will be B sub n. Okay, and I'll call this one a sub n. So let's look at the limit. As n goes to infinity of big fraction ln of n over n squared over 1 over n squared. Okay, so um, multiplying top and bottom by n squared. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about this. I'm thinking, oh no, this isn't going to work, is it? Um, but we'll we'll find out. So this is the limit, and and it's okay if there's a misstep. That's fine. So this will be well. We get some cancellation. So this is ln of n. Oh well, that's infinity. Hmm. If you go back and refer to our test, the third bullet point was if the limit's infinity then if the bottom is divergent, you get divergence for the top. Um, yeah, this, this situation. But the example we use, b sub n, is not divergent. So we're going to have to come up with something else. 
So you should pause the video and think about it. what else could we try? This didn't work, and that's okay. Um, I'm probably going to think about it for a minute, and I'm probably going to clip out me thinking about it so you don't have to wait through it. Okay, so let's do this. Let's instead say um, b sub n, say try, b sub n equals 1 over n to the 1 half power. Okay, because I know this is divergent. This is p series with p equals 1 half. If I could just write the 2 there close enough. Okay, so the limit as n goes to infinity of big fraction. Okay, now I'm trying to show, yeah, okay. So ln of n all over n squared all over 1 over n to the 1 half power. And I'm going to have to re redo this a little bit, respace things out a little bit. Yeah, okay. So this equals, if, if I'm sorry, if particularly if I multiply both, uh, both top and bottom by n to the 1 half power. So I will be getting some cancellation and then also some reduction here, right? So I'm going to have the limit so it goes to infinity of ln of n over n to the 3 halves power. Right, 2 minus 1 half is 3 halves. So in the top, if you let n go to infinity, well, ln of n goes to infinity as well. And in the bottom, if you let n go to infinity, then um, n to the 3 halves power goes to infinity as well. So uh, I'm going to compare this with the, the function of a real variable. This should be the same thing because these functions. Yeah, that should work fine. Okay. So I'm going to use the Hopital's rule. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity of, well, x to the negative of 1 power over 3 halves x to the 1 half power. Okay, so this equals, am I out of room? No, I have, I have some room. The limit, and goes to infinity. Oops, x, x goes to infinity. So I'm going to have two-thirds times, and there's a couple ways to write this. Um, I'm going to write this as 1 over x to the 3 halves power. Okay, and as x goes to infinity, x to the 3x power goes to infinity, and it's on bottom, so this equals 0. Okay, So I was using something that I know diverges, and I got 0. So that doesn't match what I'm expecting to get. So that didn't work either. So we got to try something else. Okay, So I'm, I'm almost out of room here, so oops, I'm going to pause the recording and then make some more room so we have plenty of room. Okay, so... Let's, in fact, try this one. This, this is a little bit larger, and this one's convergent. You know, I tried two that I know were divergent. I'm sorry, this one was convergent. That didn't work. But maybe n squared um, grows too fast. In other words, maybe this 1 over n squared shrinks too fast for the comparison, which is why we got infinity. So maybe if I, I did something like n to the 3 halves power, that might work. So let's 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 do this in fact. So we're gonna try. Let's try b sub n equals uh, one over n to three halves power. Okay. So the limit as n goes to infinity, big fraction. Um, I don't want to write them so big and then always shrink them afterward. Okay, bottom 1 over n to the 3 halves power on top. Kind of running out. It's a little cramped. Let's do that. It's fine. Uh, ln of n over n squared. Okay. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by uh, n to the 3 halves power. Oops. Equals. Okay, equals limit. 
10 goes to infinity. We're going to get a little bit of cancellation. So this, these two will reduce, right? I'll have uh, n to the one half power on bottom. So I'm going to have this fraction n to the one half power on bottom and ln of n on top. So um, this guy goes to zero a lot um, slower than this guy does. So maybe we're going to get somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to uh, liken this to the limit of the func of the real variable function. So the limit is x goes to infinity of ln of x all over x to the 1 half power. And I'll use the Hopital's rule. So this is the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the negative 1 power. Oops. Thinking about the next step. Negative 1 over... 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x to the, uh, I guess by x, yeah, yeah, top and bottom by x. So I'm going to get the limit as x goes to infinity of 2 over x to the 1 half power. And then we get 0. So... I am comparing with something I know to be convergent, and I got zero. Therefore, the top must be convergent. Okay, so by the limit comparison test, since uh, the series one goes from n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the three halves power converges. I'll put in a note, this is P series, P equals three halves. This series goes from one to infinity of, I can't even remember what it was, yeah, ln of n all over n squared, I want to say. Yeah, converges. All right, so... That one, there were some missteps. I tried a few things that didn't work. That's okay. That's that's how it's going to be sometimes. You know, it's it's not always so straightforward. You know, what the best choice? Um, we end up we end up using something that is not just directly there. So we had to do a little bit of guesswork, which is okay. So we did the nth term test first. We thought about doing direct comparison. Maybe that would be easy. That didn't work. So we tried a limit comparison. Didn't work. We tried a different limit comparison. Didn't work. We tried another limit comparison, and finally we got the result. Okay, so uh, first, let us do the nth term test for divergence. So the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the 1 third power plus 1. Well, n to the 1 third power goes to infinity when n goes to infinity. So you have 1 divided by a huge number, so 0. So no conclusion. Uh, we could try thinking about direct comparison, um, but that's not really going to work because the, the most obvious thing, try direct comparison test, is to say, oh, well, this is this, um, well, let's do it this way. Surely n to the one third power plus one, this is greater than or equal to uh, n to the one third power. It's, it's greater than, right? So if I flip both sides, thinking, thinking of the left as being n to the one third n to the one third power plus one over one, and the right is n to the one third power over one, and we flip both sides, I'll have one over n to the one third power plus one would be less than or equal to one over n to the one third power. But this this is divergent. So I've I've showed that my series I'm dealing with is less than a divergent series. That doesn't there's no conclusion from that, so it doesn't work. So let's try a limit comparison. There, again, as I said earlier, there may be a different direct comparison to use, but I don't see it. So I'm going to try to do a limit comparison, I think, with, um, well, 1 over n to the 1 third power might work. So let's try that. So uh, let's do this. Um, try, try p sub n equals n to the one-third power, yeah, 
which is um, that series is divergent. So we're, we're going for divergence in this case. So limit n goes to infinity, big fraction, or medium-sized fraction, I guess. So, um, oh, sorry, one over that. So one over n to the one-third power uh, under one over n to the one-third power plus one. So this equals, or in, in other words, rather, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by n to the one-third power. Okay, so this equals limit, after I get some cancellation, limit, and goes to infinity of n to the one-third power over n to the one-third power plus one. That the one doesn't really matter, so this is the limit is n goes to infinity of n to the one-third power over n to the one-third power, which is the limit, and goes to infinity of one, which is one. So by the limit comparison test, since the series as n goes from infinity to, as n goes from one to infinity of one over n to the one-third power, P series, P equals one-third, small, so it diverges. In fact, I should probably do this. Diverges, comma. This series diverges. Now, there may be another uh, comparison that's actually easier, perhaps. I'm not sure. There could be. Um, but that's that's one that does work, and that's that should be enough examples of, of what of what to do. And basically, always start with the um, nth term test. Or divergence. And, and second, um, it's not that you need to do direct comparison first, but I, I typically think about direct. I typically think about direct comparison first, and while I'm thinking about it, I might realize no, 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 this one actually needs a limit. So I generally th think, and this is not like some rule, like oh, it's, it always works this way, so you should always think about it this way. But I think about direct comparison test first, um, and then limit comparison test second. Um, that's not essential. That's just the way I think about it. 